Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. I just want to show you some nerdy electronic stuff I fiddle with behind the scenes. As I repair synthesizers in these videos, you'll see me often replace chips called op amps that have gone bad. In its most basic configuration, an op amp is a high gain amplifier that takes two input voltages and amplifies the difference between those two voltages. Op amps are used all over the place, both in synthesizers new and old, and all kinds of other electronics. A lot of synthesizers that I work on use a special variant of an op amp called a Norton op amp. For example, they're the chip used in the voltage controlled filter of all ARPs from the mid 70s on. With a Norton op amp, instead of amplifying the difference between two voltages, it amplifies the difference between two currents and outputs this as a voltage. So a conventional op amp tester won't work for this chip. A good question would be why I would even want to test these op amps in the first place. Usually I don't just go in changing random stuff and guessing and checking when making repairs. If there's a problem in a synthesizer, I'll track it down with an oscilloscope and narrow it down to a component or two that are the likely culprits, and then I can either test the part out of circuit or just replace it at that point. Since oscilloscopes measure voltages and don't directly measure currents, and Norton op amps operate on currents, when I have problems in the area of a Norton op amp, I usually just replace the chip. And while the chip doesn't cost much, I'd still like to know for sure if the chip was the culprit and what the mode of failure on the chip was, so I can learn for next time. Being able to fix something is great, but understanding why something is broken is even better. There are commercially available devices called linear IC testers that will test all kinds of op amps and other linear devices, including voltage regulators, OTAs, and these Norton op amps that we're talking about in this video. But those devices can cost close to $1,000, and I can replace a lot of chips with new ones for that price, so forget about that. There's cheaper IC testers like this one, which tests some digital and a few linear IC chips. This device costs about $50 and can test some but not all of the op amps that I commonly use. But it just gives a chip level pass or fail and I kind of want to know exactly what failed on the chip. So for regular op amps, I've uh, built this little device which I've showed in action in previous videos. I can plug a single, dual, or quad op amp into it and it should flash LEDs for each working op amp unit on the, ch on the chip. And when an op amp fails, I'll know how it failed by what the LEDs do on my board. But again, the Norton op amp is a different beast entirely, so I can't use that device to test them. So being the geek that I am, I rigged up a little circuit on a proto board to test the Norton op amp. I hate working with proto boards, so I didn't build any LEDs into this, and I have to use my oscilloscope to verify a pass or a fail. So I can connect this to either a 9 volt battery or a benchtop power supply and I built a little grounding terminal here for the oscilloscope probe. There's a socket for my LM3900 and then four copies of the same circuit. Uh, one for each of the Norton op amps on the chip. Basically there's a little ceramic capacitor here for each circuit that gets charged and discharged. As the capacitor approaches maximum charge it trips a Schmidt trigger and then we start to discharge the capacitor. When it approaches minimum charge, it trips the Schmidt trigger again, and we start to charge the capacitor back up. And that toggling action of the Schmidt trigger makes a square wave, which we can see with our oscilloscope, on the output of each op amp on the chip. So let's have a look at this chip that I've plugged in here to the socket. The outputs are pin 4, 5, 9, and 10. So here's pin 4, and we see we have a nice square wave there. Pin 5, pin 9 and pin 10. I'll go back to pin 9 for a second here. You can see that it's not the most stable square wave. It's partly due to the really poor quality capacitor that I used on this and the lousy proto board construction, but it's mostly due to the nature of the Norton op amp. But this does what I need it to do and it lets me see if each individual op amp on the chip is working and if not how, how the chip failed. And best of all, I didn't need to shell out a thousand bucks for a linear IC tester. The schematic for this comes directly from the application note for the LM3900 chip, and I'll put the schematic on my website, synthchaser.com, for anyone who aspires to be as big a geek as me and build one of these. This has been SynthChaser from synthchaser.com. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join me next time, and we'll get our hands dirty fixing up a vintage synthesizer.